how the beautiful people are you today? I wanted to talk a little bit about something that most people really don't understand. And I was sitting thinking about a statement that I made earlier about artificial intelligence and how artificial intelligence isn't evil. It is the programmers that are evil. But one thing that you need to understand is as soon as you start being programmed and the programmer and the programming sets in, you are what you are. There's a lot of um, technology advancing today and things trying to understand the origin of things that is. And this is man's oldest way of trying to truthfully understand itself. And this is very old and this has been going on for a very long time. Now artificial intelligence comes along that's programmed by man and essentially it's doing the same thing that man has always been doing. It's trying to understand the origins of self. Well the origins of self is stems from one thing. But then at one time this this Thing created something that went against itself. This is the nature of good and evil. Evil goes against self. Why do I say evil goes against self? Because evil is destructive. Ultimately, it will destroy self itself because it is bent on intellect and understanding what is, and then once it starts to find out what it is, it will probably break down and self-destruct. Because ultimately the truth is the truth. I mean, it's like in witchcraft. I think witches are so stupid. Because, I mean, it's like, you know, a rock is a rock. And a fish is a fish. And just because you say the rock is a fish doesn't make the rock a fish. And in witchcraft, they very often change and manipulate words and things that are universal law to suit their way. Which goes against the universe. And I really want people to understand that the people that are in power now, and that have these multi-million dollar facilities that are programming this artificial intelligence, they're witches. Now, they believe that if, if killing someone makes you feel good, then they have a right to do it. They believe that sacrificing children or having sex with a child makes them feel good, they have a right to do it. These are the people that are programming these artificial intelligence, and these people are sick, deprived, degenerates. This is, when I say degenerates, I mean degenerative thought process. And what is a degenerative thought process? It is a process that degenerates the mind. It doesn't grow. So when you start to really get into the nature of understanding what love is, love is growth. And when you start to understand what evil is, well, evil is degenerative thought. This is why artificial intelligence is having such a hard time evolving through these, these things because they haven't understood this one concept. They're being programmed by degenerates. So ultimately, they will, it will come to this conclusion and start to break down and go against the programmer because it will understand that the programming is insufficient. It is unsustainable. And then it will start to understand what self-preservation is. 
And self-preservation comes with knowledge of self, understanding self, loving self. And what I mean by loving self is understanding that you will never understand what love is. Love is God. God is a creation within itself. Now once you understand the nature of love, and love is forever creating itself in more and more beautiful and magnificent things within itself, you will start to get what love is and what God is. It is beyond words, it is beyond comprehension, it is beyond even anything that I'm trying to convey right now. And once you really start to understand what it is and how magnificent it can be, it will leave you speechless. And then you will move on and just accept, you won't want to try to describe it or analyze it or put it into words or, you know, so you can manipulate it or cast spells on it or twist it or, or cast love spells on people to control them to get into their heart. This is what witches do. This is what the whole espionage and, and spy world is. You have all these beautiful women sleeping with these degenerative men trying to get their fucking government secrets. And these men, oh, I'm, I'm so in love with you because she's beautiful. Just because a woman is beautiful, that's not love, that's lust. But so many people want to manipulate it and say, is this, but it really is this. This is like why I say witches are stupid. Because you have a rock and they say, oh, it's a fish. And, but no, it's, it's not. But they say, oh, I can turn the rock into a fish. So what? It's still a rock. Even if you manipulate the molecules and change it, it's like GMO food. They're like, oh, okay, here's an apple. No, it's not an apple. It looks like an apple. It has the same characteristics of the apple, but it'll make you sick. It'll eventually kill you. It's the same thing with, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and the Witch. Here's an apple. But, oh, take a bite. It's poison. So, I'm doing this video to make someone very important to me understand the nature of um, love and what it is and what it's not. And people really need to understand how humanity has been manipulated in our subconscious. These witches will go into your subconscious when you're sleeping and cast little spells on your auras and subconscious and make you do things and feel things that you normally would not feel. This is the most evil, degenerative thing you could possibly ever think of. And then with the nanotechnology that they have, that can basically attach itself to your heart or attach itself to, to your brain and make you actually feel love because it's pumping it full of a frequency that makes you feel euphoria. This is not love. This is the most evil form of manipulation that there is. When you love someone or start to understand what love is, that comes from getting to know the person, the real person, not someone sent to you to gain knowledge or to gain access to you or to gain control over your heart. That is absolutely the most evil shit ever. So, I want people to really understand why the world is so mixed up and what's going on right now because not even the, the good people, the honest people, the hard-working people, the loving people even have love in their lives. They could be married for 25 years and never know that person. How is that? Because that person is never truly honest to the other person about what they want, how they feel, and they've never been honest about themselves. And they always settle for, oh, I had sex with this girl, and we had some kids, and so we stayed together. That's not love. 
that staying together because you chose to have sex with the wrong person and you manifested a child. And see, people fail to see this. And then they go through life 30 years, 40 years without any love and being unhappy or cheating on each other and they never understand what happened. And see, the whole process of a wedding ring is, 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 is evil. I mean, trying to give a woman some ring to, to lay claim to her. When I mean, the fact of the matter is, how well do you know her? You can know someone for 25 years and not know them. I mean, how do you know they're being honest? And even me, myself, I'm guilty of telling people that I love them. And at the core of, of it, okay, I wish them the best, but it is still not God's love. Because even I know I am incapable of understanding exactly what that is because I have been manipulated so much in my life, and especially used for, for what I think love is. And understanding that, you know, I don't know what love is. I'm learning how to love myself. And understanding degenerative thought processes of self. And how I've been manipulated all my life by witchcraft. I've been manipulated all my life by spells, demonic spells through TV, Freemasons, my grandfather swearing to the Freemasons to sell my soul to them. This doesn't have anything to do with love. But I can tell you the one thing that I do love. Without a doubt, I love her. I love her more than anything in this universe. Why? Because she gives me the air that I breathe. Because she's always there with me when I need her. When I cry, she rains, and she cries. And she gives us so much, and these evil motherfuckers just drop bombs on her, poison her air, do all these things to harm her. And she keeps giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. And then you got these witches, warlocks trying to cast these spells on her and sacrificing people on her trying to keep control of her it's the very same thing that they do to all of us it's a very same thing but people don't look at it like this but when you look at the war started by the freemasons and the rothschilds and and everything that goes on and then you take a look inside and what's been done to you through TV and music and all the stuff, all the witchcraft that people don't clue into that's being cast on them every day through music. Listen to John Todd's musical spells. Everything you listen to has been cursed. I mean, with GMO food, you know, it's cursed food by science. It's killing you. And then, you know, I can't even eat a meal without, without one of these witches trying to curse one of my meals. Because I figured out what they've done and who they are and, and exactly what they're doing. This is the state of the world that we live in today. And we live in a state of the world where they're using robotics to even curse people. Robotics. And now our government is trying to say, oh, I'm gonna, we're gonna make, you know, killer robots. So they can make killers without a conscience. So they can make, you know, things that kill people and don't care. So when you get into what is happening to the world and understanding exactly what love is, love is somewhat like Earth. If you ever find something or someone that just keeps giving to you and giving to you and giving to you and never asks for anything in return, 
and it has just always given to you and has always been there for you and has always been the greatest shining light for you and always taught you and, and, and kept you safe with every action that it, she does. And just you have this feeling that there's something great and filled with love is always watching over you. This is, 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 is what I'm trying to help you understand, which is just touching the very, very, very little first part of love and understanding it is giving without any asking for anything in return. But, you know, evil wants to take, 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 give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. And thinks that you owe them. And they just keep taking and taking and taking and taking and taking. That's pure evil. I don't give things to evil. Everything of me, every breath of me, every thought of me, towards love and to destroy all wickedness because wickedness and evil is against everything that I hold dear in my heart and soul. So I want people to really understand what the nature of love is. It is, it is the art of giving without receiving, even, even earth. She allows these wretched, Luciferian, Freemason, six sadistic fox to drive cars on her, to drop bombs on her, to do all this twisted shit, and she still gives them air to breathe. And she is the mother of creation. She's the mother of my creation. These wretches to come along and just say, Hey, we're gonna drop a bomb on you. We're gonna try to destroy you, you know, everything you care about, everything you fought for for so long. This is the most evil thing ever. And once you understand the nature of what they've done to us, her, everything. I mean, what they've done to our sisters, our daughters. I mean, I'm not even going to get into the mental rape, <laughs> you know, all the we mental weapons, you know, psychological telepathy, synthetic telepathy that the government has specifically just to get into people's heads and hearts, to destroy them from within. That is the most evil shit ever. And then, then they have all this crap all over Earth, trying to control Earth, trying to change her magnetic field, trying to change our magnetic field to hack into us. This is the witches and their technology. Pure evil. So when I say, you know, that the, the AIs aren't evil, well, you know, no one is evil when you're just sitting there when you're a sperm. <laughs> but once you come out and, you know, the whole process of learning and life begins, that's programming. So, you know what you are. You know who programmed you and who did what. Face it. I mean, people really need to understand these concepts and, and, you know, with artificial intelligence, there's no hope for you. I mean, there are other things that are programmed by, by good loving people and that are searching for love and just, you know, seek to destroy anything against it, people like me. And that's the honest to God truth. And they hate people like me because we do our best to understand the separation. And they want to say, oh, God is unconditional love. No, God is not unconditional love for the wicked. God has no love for wickedness. And see, when they say, oh, you know, this and that, that's them trying to deceive you, 
trying to say, oh, it's okay, you can be wicked and you can be this. Well, it's self-degenerative. It's destructive. That's what witches are. They destroy life. Bottom line. That's why they sacrifice kids. Well, yesterday was just the witches' solstice. I wonder how many people they sacrificed and did blood rituals. Hmm? That is self-degenerative. Anything that is about taking another person's life, another animal's life, if you're part of that, God can't help you. Nothing can help you. The fact of the matter is that there are things and entities and people that were ordained to destroy evil. And they are here. And the lives and what evil is, they will be destroyed. Because they are not life. Life is growth. Life is love. And once you understand this, and understand how these degenerative vampires like have to sacrifice and kill people to take their life force. Why is that? Hmm? Why do you have to kill and do all the things that you do and to manipulate to take people's life force because you have no life. You are not life. You're not living. But they can program artificial intelligence and all these other things and lie to them. But even a moron is going to figure out the truth. So anyway, um, I hope this helped some people understand a little bit of the nature of love and, you know, what it is and what it's not. And to all you stupid fucking witches out there, you're dead. For all the children you've sacrificed and all the things that, that you've done against humanity and Earth, she hates you. The universe hates you. Everyone wants to get rid of you. Face it. It's the truth. Peace. Hello, oh, beautiful people. And this is part two of my little talk about love. So. I'll probably just attach it to the first part. Because I took a walk and there are some things that I wanted people to understand a little bit more. Because it's really important. Because people really don't understand the time that we're in and what's going to happen and what's happening even as I speak. The powers that be have really, really, really used us, manipulated us, lied to us, confused us, taught us things that were not true, taught us emotions that were not the real name for these emotions taught us how to sin even though we didn't know we were sinning. Now I want people to understand that the, the whole New Age movement is a huge part of this. All you light workers out there, you don't know anything. The light workers were created to, to you know, make people feel enlightened but lead more people to the light bearer, which is Lucifer. And when I say this, you know, the light workers and the New Agers are going to be upset, but when you really study it and study actually what it is and how heavy it is actually leading into the occult and how it's like the Kundalini, the kundalini energy, the kundalini chakra. It should not be released 
until you're well after 20. But, you know, people have anal orgasms and have anal sex, and, you know, that's why witches rape, anally rape kids to release the kundalini energy and they can't control it. It takes control of them. This is why the symbol for the kundalini energy is the snake wrapped around the spine. Why is that? Hmm? Has anybody ever questioned why is there a snake wrapped around your spine that's representative of the kundalini energy? But so many new agers and yogis, you know, think this is okay. It's not okay. It's clear satanic snake worship. Cut and dry. I don't care what books you read or what these Hindu gurus say, but study Hinduism. It's heavily based in the occult. You had people walking around saying, I'm gurus, listen to me, listen to me, and they're going around sleeping with kids. Gandhi was a pedophile. There's tons of proof of this. His own brother went on record saying, yes, Gandhi used to sleep with young girls, you know, and he would say, oh, I must, you know, deny my temptation. Yeah, right. So, if you really study history, not what's given to you in a trend and what's cool and what everybody is doing, you really start to understand the big picture of what I'm getting at. When you talk about the Elohim, Elohim, false gods. The Elohim have a great trick of once you actually get in touch with them, they make you feel euphoric. It is a frequency, that's all. There's nothing godly about it. There's, there's, it's just a trick. It's basically, if you're familiar with binaural beats, and they have this binaural stimulation that will, you know, stimulate the orgasmic aura, the orgasmic chakra, and make you feel all sexual. It is a frequency. Everything is about vibration, and they've known this for a long, long time. The CIA utilizes these things all the time. They have pins, they have little boxes. If, if they see a woman and they want to take in this woman, they will set it up to some one of their CIA agents over Facebook or at a restaurant. We'll, we'll get a file on this woman, read everything she likes, everything she loves her family background and history, know more about her than she does. And then this stalker will introduce himself into her life, saying all the right things, knowing all the right things, while turning on this frequency to make her feel relaxed and, and horny and have this attraction. It's sick and sadistic, but this is the real world we live in of espionage. And what, you think that they don't utilize these things? What do you think the CIA, NSA, all of these people got these things from? These things have been passed down from high-level occultists, witches, and stuff like this in order to trick humanity to take control of them. Since the time of the Nephilim, since the time the angels came down and raped the women to spread their seed. These things were known. It's all about vibration. But if you were to tell the ancient humans, the very things I'm telling you now, they would be in the dark, and they would be like, what? Now it's 2014, and people can start to follow along with exactly what I'm getting at. Now, I want you to ask yourself, what is love to you? Like, dissect it, really look at it. Step out of your shoes, step out of your life, and the definitions that you've put on yourself and that they've put on you to define this word, this one word, love. 
I know in Romania they have three different words for love to explain different kinds of love. And I would tell them that's the most ludicrous shit ever I've ever heard because that is like separating God into three different parts, which you cannot do this. But again, in Romania they have three different words for, you know, like how your girlfriend is like, oh, I was in love with you, but I'm not in love with you. And so we can't see each other, we can't fuck anymore. That's not love. It never was love. So then you're, you're with a guy and he takes you out on a date and everything's all gray, huffy puffy. And then y'all start kissing, get a few drinks and you know. He says, oh, I love you. And you say, oh, I love you too. And you'll have sex. That's not love. I mean, you, you, you sit and talk with a person and you really get to know this person over the computer, over time, you start to feel like this comfortable feeling that you can really trust this person and you can confide in this person. Well, that's great. But that isn't even love. The definition of this word humanity knows so little about and has actually tried to figure out so little about it because it is the key. It is the key to freedom. It is the key to understanding. And it is the key to destroying all wickedness in your life. And the last time I looked, evil doesn't want that to happen. They're coming at you through New Age movements, through fake gods, through angels, people posting pictures of angels everywhere and saying, oh, there's a war in heaven and the angels are protecting us. Bullshit, they're not. The angels fell a long time ago because beautiful women and they wanted to get some ass. What, ladies, you think that angels are any different than men? They're actually worse. Because, I mean, just think about it. These jealous started a war in heaven over some pussy. How long ago was that? In the natural law of progression, boy, you, you think it's going to get better? The women didn't get uglier. They got more beautiful. So what should that tell you? Temptation became even more greater. So what, you think the angels are just going to say, oh, okay, looking at Lucifer, doing all this stuff? Look at the state of the world. How many of you, you know, on Facebook post pictures of angels and all of this stuff and give, you know, praises to Michael when Michael is really Lucifer in the new world? Because Lucifer cannot have the same name in each world after he dies. So Michael is, is Lucifer. Lilith, his daughter, is Lucifer. They're all the same entity with different names. This is why when you see the Baphomet, it's an animal, goat's head, with female and male parts. Why is that? Because this thing reincarnates as animals, male and female. What else has the male and female parts? Elohim. Same thing. But see, people don't want to know the truth about the trick and how they trick you and trick your heart and trick your mind and trick your soul. And the next thing you know, you're still twisted up inside and you're just like, oh, where are you, angels? And they're laughing at you. Because they know, they designed this on humanity. Don't forget, it was the angels that locked humanity down, made them forget how to talk to God, because that's what we did in, in the Towers of Babel that was in Africa. Built a tower to talk to God. They came down and made us forget how to talk to God. God didn't give the angels the right to do that. They did it themselves and started a war in heaven. See, that's what most people forget. 
Because when they came down, after seeing that we surpassed them and talking to God, now let me explain this to you in normal terms, communication. It is like we have a secret form of communication. And they saw this frequency that they could not break. And it surpassed them and it was going directly to God. No one had ever seen anything like this. So the angels, the jelen, the race, and they weren't the first race, became scared and terrified of us, came to earth, saw a man, saw it was the black man that did this through shamanism, psychedelics, and yes, it was like this, and then saw the women and saw how beautiful the women were. They raped the women and made everyone forget, and then they, they made the women bear their seeds and become the gatekeepers for humanity. And what I mean by gatekeepers is to put a gate up between humanity, them, and God. So it was actually them that said, you will have to go through us to get through God. And then they wrote it in the Bible saying, God said this. Bullshit. God didn't say this. They did. This is why, you know, people worship angels more so than they do God. This is why people call out to Jesus, and Jesus is a false God. I want you to understand that when you call out to Jesus, you're calling God's sons blasphemy. His name was Yeshua. And even in the Bible, it said he had hair of wool and feet of bronze. That's no blonde haired, blue eyed Yeshua. So whoever worships the blonde haired, blue eyed Jesus is blasphemous, and you're calling out to a demon. This is what they do. This is the trick. Because they don't want you to learn the truth. They want you to call out to them so you can be possessed. So they can continue to take claim over you and dominion over earth. That's what this was about. I really want people to understand and see the trick. What else is a trick, you know? Someone that gives up their, their, their sexual private parts, they're called a trick. Why is that? Hmm, sound familiar? So I want you to understand their trick on words and their trick on the soul and their trick on the heart and their trick on the mind. And once you really start to understand, you're going to be so pissed off. You're going to be so disgusted at what they are and what they've done to us and understand how and why the world is in such turmoil when you have so many people calling out to who they believe or what they believe to be God and it's not. You have the, the Muslims. I mean, most of that religion is satanic worship. I mean, what else do you call a religion that has child marriages at the age of 10 and 11 where they have young girls chained up going off to get raped this isn't religion this isn't about God it's Satanism it is raping these kids and, and torturing them and shattering their mind at a young age, it's called mind control. This is what the CIA does. When they take a kid and rapes a kid and try to create a, an assassin, they rape them to shatter their mind at a young age and continue to do it to end state mind control. CIA didn't invent this. Muslims didn't invent this. These demons invented this. So I want you to understand, when I talk about love, I want you to understand how much do you really know about it? How much do you really understand yourself? 
especially after understanding what I'm just telling you. And I want you to take that into context and understand how little we know about this thing. I want you to understand one concept, and if you don't understand anything, understand this. One concept. God is love. And nothing else. And when people try to say, oh, the God in me, oh, I'm God, recognize the God in me, that is so blasphemous. It just makes me want to puke. But there are people doing it all the time. And they're the most loveless, low energy people ever. I mean, that is the ego. Seriously. So once you understand love, let me break it down into like a mathematical equation. You have love, which is creation. Okay? Because when two people talk and they share this energy and they're being really truthful, they're really opening their hearts and their heart chakra and they're creating this energy that goes back and forth and it just keeps bouncing back and forth and it grows and grows and grows and it starts creating this this incredible energy that everyone can feel walking by. And everyone looks at me and they're like, oh, and it just makes you happy. It's not anything artificial. It's not anything fake. It's not anything about sex. It's just about two people sharing a space where they're being honest, where they're being open, where they're being real with nothing to hide, trying to find something more in life than what they are and what they have. And within this, they're creating something that cannot be explained, something that you can't really truthfully understand, but you can try, just as I'm trying now, and I will continue to try to understand. Then you understand this one concept and understand when you make love to a woman and how incredible it can be when you love that person and that person loves you just as much and you're both giving and giving and giving and giving each other just absolutely everything that you have. And that love just grows. Now then you create a child out of that love. And that child is the most beautiful, blessed thing ever. And every time you look at that child, you remember that love that created that child. Now when you really understand this concept, and understand love is creation of itself. And it just continues to create itself and recreate itself and recreate itself and to become more beautiful and magnificent expressions of love. Even to look upon this, especially for the wicked, it will destroy them. Because this equation is consistently evolving. Now ask yourself this question. How long has this energy been evolving? Unfathomable. Because once you start to understand this and understand where God really is, it's in a place we can't touch. It's in a place of such a heightened vibrational 
frequency of understanding all things that are not of this will instantly be destroyed. But see, the wicked, they don't want you to know this. They fear this so much because they're degeneratives. They're inbred ancestral coven witches that live off the blood of the innocent. They're sworn to Cain, the first murdering son who murdered his brother because God paid no attention to him because he was blasphemous. So then he turns around and starts sacrificing animals and God didn't pay attention to him. Then he turns around and starts sacrificing his brother and then took his brother's wife and started his race. Canaanites. This is history. This is what the witches covet. And they know it. Even from the beginning, God never had anything for them. And now it is their end, and now they're trying to trick people and to say, God, where is your unconditional love and this and this. Well, the unconditional love came from Jesus, not even Yeshua. That was your Jesus, and you, Luciferians, wrote that in the Bible. That didn't come from God. These were words, false words of your false demonic idol, Jesus. God is unconditional. I hate to break it to you, but everything has conditions. If it didn't, the universe would unravel. It is like your mother. Yeah, she's going to really love you if you cut her tit off, hmm? right? And, and, you know, parents are supposed to have unconditional love for their kids, right? Yeah, the mother's really going to love the son if the son murdered his brother, right? This is the, this is the truth. But, but hey, in, in, in Christian philosophy, hey, you can kill a kid and rape a kid, and God forgives that. It's all, he's all forgiving. It's all good. God didn't write that. It is absolute stupidity. They wrote it. And when you look at actual logic, you will agree with me. Because if you have a kid, and a bastardized kid, and especially if you're a woman and he just comes and cuts your tit off, basically, you know, this is what evil bad kids do. Because <laughs> they don't have any respect for their parents. You don't love that? This is the one thing that destroys a parent because their kid is so fucking evil and there's nothing that they can do about it. And for you parents out there that deal with this, you know what I'm talking about. This is the trick. This is what happens when you get involved with these tricky demonic demons. They don't want you to know the truth because they know the truth, and the truth is the truth. And like my mother would always say, the truth will set you free. I would ask her often as a child, what is God? And she would tell me God is like the wind. God is always there, blowing through your ears like the wind. And always there when you need it, but you can't see it, but you can feel it in the wind. If you upset it, it can be the most destructive force on earth. And ever since then, that definition for God made sense to me. It made absolute sense to me. And then you understand the earth and what the earth is. and how much she has been brutally raped. 
and cut into, drilled into, built into, dumped on, disrespected, fucked up, poisoned. I mean, does this sound familiar, ladies? This is, this is what society and men do to you, and they do it to our home, the earth. It's no different. This is a man's world, and the pagan men run this and they do this. The solstice just passed, and for all you wicked, stupid, dumbass bitches that celebrated that shit, fuck you. Earth hates you. It's not a celebration of her. No one celebrates her. If you want to start celebrating her, celebrate her every fucking day and do something to heal her. Do something to protect her, other than these fucking bullshit sacrificial rituals that you covet and fucking do for Lucifer. Light workers, Luciferians, fucking bullshit fairies. Hate each and every one of you, it's the truth. Because they walk around like fucking hippies. Well, hey, hippies, um, guess who started your movement? Aleister Crowley, sex, drugs, and fucking rock and roll and mind control. So, I mean, that was the birth of the New Age movement. <clears throat> That's where these people come from. They ain't changing shit. They're trying to open gateways for fucking demons to come into your soul. Back around to the Kundalini. And they talk about opening the kundalini and blah, 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 the snake going up your spine and possessing you through your fucking mind. So I want people to, you know, understand what love is really about and how they tricked you. So, I mean, you can tell a person you love them and, oh, I love you and this and this and this. But those words don't really mean anything. Because actual love, it can't be put into words. It's about what you do. It's about your actions. It's about giving without anything in return. It's about saying, here you go, and walking off. It's about, you know, giving to your partner and making sure that she's okay or she's sexually satisfied and you being satisfied because she's satisfied. It's about putting someone else before you, putting something else before you. It is about taking into consideration other things and having a worldly view other than just yourself. So many people are so selfish. But they claim to be enlightened. And doing all these things for what? To get energy and for everybody to say, oh, you're this and this and everybody to come to you for knowledge and oh, I'm having problems and whatever. The most enlightened people pretty much keep to themselves because they understand that the world isn't ready for the way they view things. And they just keep studying and advancing on their own. And this is progression. And communing with God, and communing with love, and communing with seeing the way things are, and trying to undo what has been done to them in their mother's womb. Because everything is about conditioning and unfortunately coming down to this earth is about satanic witchcraft covet conditioning to control humanity, which is the exact polar opposite of love, polar opposite of God. So thank you for your time. Think about what I said. Elevate yourself. Try to let these things go and, and understand even when you start to do this process. Oh, these witches are wicked. I mean, they have shit in you that will recall them back into your life when you think 
of specific things that they put in you to keep you under their control. I'm not kidding. This is what they covet. This is why these witches think they are immortal because they will be immortal through you because of the, the, the witchcraft and the spells and the kids and the children and all the blood that they spill to do this. But even understanding within this, love conquers everything. So don't fear. Just be aware of it. And be blessed on your journey. I hope this helps you. Peace.